uh, these uh, fascinating topics. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Beatrice Delmasinel, a French lawyer admitted at the Paris Bar uh, and a partner at uh, the business law firm Osborne Clark, uh, an international law firm uh, which has uh, a very strong practice in the digital uh, business law. Um, it's uh, the last session uh, before the end of this uh, conference. Uh, yesterday, uh, the debate was on uh, how um, um, data analytics and big data uh, was going to change um, the law, um, starting with the, uh, the process itself, um, judges, uh, lawyers, uh, which is a very exciting uh, and, uh, and scary uh, perspective. This morning we heard about the impact of data analytics uh, on consumers. Um, and to finish the session, uh, least but not last, uh, the, the impact of data analytics on individuals. Uh, and uh, I'm sure by now, at this point in the, in the conference, you have uh, fully understood that this is more about asking many, many questions uh, than having all the answers, obviously. Um, uh, and uh, for this session, uh, we have a brilliant, uh, brilliant panel, uh, which I, I will uh, introduce very briefly. Uh, and, uh, and the questions uh, we will uh, focus on uh, for this uh, last session will be um, the, um, this, question, this notion of uh, um, finding, um, if possible, um, the balance uh, between the, contr the control that individuals can have on their personal data um, uh, uh, and, and the, uh, the, the usefulness uh, and the benefits of being able, of course, through uh, data analytics um, uh, techniques um, to, uh, to, uh, to gather, collect, and, and use this personal data, uh, which raises uh, questions uh, on, uh, on privacy and data protection. Um, my panel is very uh, <laughs> rebellious here. Attention, please. <laughs> um, yeah, but we want to benefit from that debate, so uh, thank you. Um, question of privacy, a uh, question of uh, ethics uh, as well, uh, something that uh, has been uh, touched a uh, little bit upon uh, in, in the earlier discussions, uh, but which of course is uh, a, a very important one uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this debate. Uh, and, and because we... Uh, we, we talk uh, about issues which, of course, are uh, in, uh, grounded in the uh, digital environment. Uh, this all goes together with security and, uh, and, uh, and cyber security, of course. So uh, to talk about this uh, with us this morning, uh, we, we have uh, Elena Poncharlet from uh, Microsoft, who will uh, tell us um, uh, introduce herself about uh, what she's doing at Microsoft and, uh, and, and the topic she cares about uh, this morning, about the, uh, the fourth revolution uh, uh, of uh, big data and what it brings um, to uh, uh, welfare and, uh, and, 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 the, and the world more generally. Very ambitious uh, topic that she will cover in just a few minutes. <laughs> I mean, the topic will be covered in a few minutes. So a big challenge for you, Elena. Um, we, we, we have um, um, Edouard Geoffrey, who is a, a General Secretary of the French Data Protection Agency, uh, CNIL, uh, who will give us um, the regulator uh, view uh, of data protection and uh, ethics as well, something uh, uh, he will update us on, uh, on the initiatives that the CNIL is uh, taking on these, uh, on these very uh, critical um, topics. Uh, we, we have Yves Alexandre de Montjoie, who uh, is uh, uh, a researcher and uh, will talk to us um, as well from um, the point of view of uh, um, research uh, and, uh, and uh, what all these uh, uh, questions around uh, protection, uh, privacy, and ethics. Uh, means uh, in, the, in the context of um, technology. 
Uh, and uh, we have Laure Lavorel, who is uh, uh, Vice President and uh, uh, General Counsel at uh, uh, CR Technologies, who uh, uh, is a technology uh, uh, company, and uh, she will uh, uh, conclude on uh, the more specific issue of cybersecurity, even though I think everybody is going to cover that as well. So um, the floor is yours, uh, Elena, to introduce the first um, topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Beatrice. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. I would like to say that since I'm not coming from the academia, uh, I would like to apologize in advance uh, to, you know, not have uh, this uh, in deep approach. I'm going to be much more practical. I'm going to present the, the standpoint of, of Microsoft. So this is my first apology. And the second one is uh, I'm seeing my colleagues that uh, are bringing uh, slides. Uh, we were told not to bring them, so I'm on freestyle, <laughs> and I'm hoping that um, at least you will, there will be more room for, for questions. So I'm Elena Poncharlet. I work at the Digital Crimes Unit, which is a group of attorneys, investigators, and data analysts um, that exist in Microsoft. We um, belong to the legal department, and we have two, two missions or two pillars. Uh, first, uh, protecting the, the customers in the cloud, the customers that uh, work with our products against, uh, against uh, malware and against uh, you know, bad, uh, bad uh, botnets that are attacking them. Uh, hacking is, is very frequent, unfortunately. And the second mission that we have is protecting vulnerable populations, uh, which are you know, millennials or people that just you know, uh, is caught into tech scams. Uh, for instance, they are calling them at home, saying it is Microsoft uh, uh, hotline and you have a virus in your machine, and obviously it's not. It's organized crime. So that's, uh, that's what, uh, what we do. And uh, because, you know, I love technology, I'm a passionate of this topic, uh, and even if it is not my subject of expertise, I'm here to, to talk about this. I think that um, before uh, you know, uh, introducing the topic, it's important to understand where we are uh, in the you know, economic and uh, technological phase we are. And um, I'd like to, to talk to you about uh, what we call uh, the fourth industrial revolution, which is a notion that is brought by Mr. Klaus Schwartz, which is the, uh, the organizer and the, the person that is uh, um, behind the, the Davos, uh, the Davos um, World Economic Forum. Uh, he uh, introduced the concept of the fourth industrial revolution in which we are now. Uh, this, uh, you know, the first industrial revolution was about steam, about railways, you know, when it came, you know, from, from uh, uh, the, the passage from uh, the, you know, the, the animal traction to the steam and to the railway. That was the first one. It, uh, it brought with it a lot of uh, economic and a lot of, you know, different uh, societal and way of working changes. So that was the first one. The second one was about, you know, electricity as a commodity, uh, where we didn't, uh, we no longer had the, you know, the, our uh, power uh, of for energy at home, but we had this commodity, you know, for everyone, and it would be really easy to, to get it. The third one was the, the, the digital one. We, you know, um, uh, we, a home in, uh, a PC in every home, and also the, 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 the internet revolution. And now we are in the inception of the fourth one, whereby uh, there is, you know, a mixture between the digital and the biological and the, and the reality. I don't know if you heard about the mixed reality and the possibilities that you have, you know, with you, these lenses that are, you know, in three dimension and that are, you know, giving you much more insight on things. It's the, you know, the nanocomputing, also the, you know, the, the three dimension printing. Uh, and also artificial intelligence, I think is one of the most powerful trends uh, that are represented by this revolution that is going so fast and that is absolutely going to change uh, the way in which we work and the way in which, you know, we, um, you know, what we are. Um, you know, it's, you know, the robot, the human, so this is why I was talking about the mixture between the human and, um, and uh, the artificial. 
So um, I think it is also important to understand what we mean, or what I mean uh, in, in my speech about um, artificial intelligence. So, you know, we put this in perspective. So to me, artificial intelligence is the possibility for the machine uh, to take decisions in really complex issues um, that, uh, you know, are based on, on data. And I think that, you know, artificial intelligence is not a really um, new concept. In fact, uh, it's uh, quite a longer one. And I think that, you know, the ones that are in technology know what the, the, the Turing testing is, you know, the possibility for the machine to be, you know, prevailing over humans when it comes, you know, to, for instance, some, some chess playing or some go or those plays that, you know, there are, there are challenges and there are competition, uh, competitions between humans and machines. So the Turing test is when the machine is, is winning over the, the human. So uh, these uh, decision making um, are, um, you know, made in artificial intelligence by machines. And the reason why there is, you know, a, a renaissance of artificial intelligence is due to two things. First, the, um, the um, enormous amount of data. Um, you know, think, for instance, to the Internet of Things uh, or, you know, the, the, the mobile devices. Uh, you know, how many times a day you can make yourself a picture of yourself. That's what we call the quantified self. Uh, so there is a lot of, uh, of data and there is a very powerful computing, uh, which is possible thanks to the cloud computing. So these two elements together make that, you know, the training a machine, which was very difficult and it took a lot of time uh, some years ago, now it's easy. And, you know, the machine learning is the possibility for the machine to be, not actually be programmed to respond to a question, but to find, thanks to the algorithms, the response by itself. And amongst the big, the, 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 the machine learning, we have the deep learning, which is even a step farther because it's introducing abstract concepts, like for instance, expression, facial expressions, so the machines may understand if someone is disgusted, if someone is, is you know, happy. Uh, also, they may understand the content of a book. Uh, or, you know, may be able to be translating, you know, one book from Russian to, you know, to Spanish or to French in a really uh, quick manner. And the reason why it's called deep learning is because it is mimicking actual, the, you know, the, the, the human neuronal activity. Uh, and it goes really into deep. So um, what the machine is doing is trying to be uh, finding the response, but not you know through through a logical path, but uh, you know through a path that would be like in a, the, the neurons in our brain, which are not you know obvious connections, but are connections you know driven by you know the fact that uh, there are you know some uh, you know common uh, common um, statistics or, or hidden um, patterns in this in this data. So um, I think that uh, it was important to, to clarify the way I'm thinking about artificial intelligence. So uh, what is thinking uh, Microsoft about <coughs> artificial intelligence? So I think that you know one of the things that our company w wishes is to democratize artificial intelligence and our 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 motto is uh, you know empowering every person and every organization in the planet to achieve more and we think that artificial intelligence is you know a very good way for achieving this goal the way in which we think about this is you know machines with humans so we uh, we we um, we use what we call Augmentation. We do not think that you know replacing the human uh, is the right thing. I know that there is a lot of fear about you know uh, applying a massively artificial intelligence, and people will lose jobs. And you know we can you know there is always you know this imagine of the computer Al in uh, in 2000 Odyssey of Space, and you know the, the you know the machine that is you know doing things against humans. Uh, we don't think this is the, is the right thing. We think that the right response is, uh, you know, using the empathy, using the creativity, using the human judgment. So characteristics that are really 
purely human, uh, together with the high power computation of machines. And where necessary, uh, we could correct the results of the machine when we think it's you know, not the right treatment, for instance, for if the machine is, for instance, uh, um, thinking about a treatment of you know for a cancer and uh, you know this patient is you know uh, young uh, children maybe what the machine is saying is not the right treatment so putting really the human in the center i think this is um, this is extremely important i think that uh, we also have to think about what i call uh, algorithm accountability which means that uh, we have always to understand how the algorithms are uh, are done to to undo it in case the machine is causing harm um, i think it's also very important to you know put ethics in the design of the machine so we do not really I have the feeling of being alienated by the machine. Um, I think that you all, we all have had, uh, you know, the impression, for instance, when you're calling, you know, some uh, intelligent agent uh, in, um, you know, in this, you know, data, uh, in, in these uh, call centers, and it's, you know, telling you, I mean, where you want to travel and uh, at what time, and it's, you know, really not, not good. So I think that we have to humanize as much as possible the, the machines. I think that uh, my colleagues that are working in the French Canil uh, will tell you, and I agree with that, that we have also to have a really strong privacy and that, you know, the, the individuals have to be in control of the information that they give and must understand what they give. Here I will have, you know, some, um, some uh, other ideas that I will share later on when we have the discussion. And um, I think it is, you know, uh, really important also to, um, you know, to, to, to put, you know, also the, the you know, the human uh, judgment and, the, you know, the human uh, touch uh, in, in this whole result, you know, to correct the machine if this is necessary. So. Thank you, Elena. So. It's so it's interesting you, you, you so, so, so basically you mentioned that concept of augmented uh, human. Um, we, we, we hear about augmented reality, but, uh, but this is saying that by putting um, human uh, at the center of uh, artificial uh, intelligence, um, the, the goal is um, to, um, to, 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 to give uh, individuals uh, some kind of control. Um, a little provocative uh, question here. Um, how how is Microsoft uh, how far is Microsoft uh, ready to go in terms of uh, transparency uh, with respect to uh, uh, this uh, notion to uh, control the, the algorithm or um, uh, intervene if um, um, uh, 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 an algorithm proves to um, to adopt a bias or um, uh, through the, uh, of course, um, uh, deep learning and, and the autonomy that uh, this, this is. Uh, because artificial intelligence is more about empowering machine than, than uh, humans. So how do, how do you see that um, a company as global as Microsoft can uh, address this? Mm. I, I would say that uh, it uh, deals mainly with the quality of data. I think that machines do not have soul. So they will be, you know, giving some outcomes or providing some responses depending on the quality of the data that you are providing to the machine. So if you give biased data to the machine or if you give incomplete data to the machine, the machine is likely to, you know, provide, uh, you know, wrong decisions uh, or, uh, you know, decisions that, you know, are, are really, really, really biased. And I think that, um, I think that as much as possible, we have to understand what is behind the machine and the algorithms. And I know that technically this is extremely complex, uh, but we have to really strive to, to do this because, uh, as you say, it, it can be you know, wrong, it can be biased, uh, it can you know, affect and, and even make a deeper uh, gap between, you know, for instance, the 
people that uh, have access to credit, the, the ones that are not having access to credit, only for you know a mathematical and machine reasons. This is why I think that um, we have to work with the decisions of the machine because uh, in most of the time the machine will not be wrong, but a human must be there in order to correct or to address or to answer the questions of the person why I didn't get my credit. Uh -huh. So, you know. It, it goes um, a little bit back to the early discussion about w w what is going to be unfair um, because it's a, it's a very vague concept and it's, it's very much based on perception. And, and, and I see, and, and that's a question for, for the whole panel, um, when we talk about ethics, we actually talk about something that is going to be um, not a, a tangible, clear concept, uh, unvariable concept. It's actually very much... Uh, uh, based on, uh, on on the different culture, um, so it's very human, in fact, <laughs> and um, so we, we we have the challenge of uh, global tools and global technology with artificial uh, intelligence, um, and the challenge of ethics is until that it uh, takes us back to the reality of uh, humanity in uh, in the diversity of cultures and uh, and ethics. Anybody on that question? <laughs> no? No, I, I, I think it's very true. I think it's really about different difference of culture. I, even if uh, we, we, we see two movements, um, the globalization uh, is not only with tools, it's also cultural as well. Uh, when you travel in Asia, uh, you can feel in some places that people are acting like American. Sorry for the American citizen in this, in this audience, but I'm sure they will... Uh, they will be. They will agree with me that uh, the Americanization of the culture is everywhere in the world. So, we, you have that movement. Uh, so you might think that um, in a few years the entire world would be like much closer in terms of being similar to like culturally, culturally speaking. On the other hand, um, you can see that with the, the political environment now in so many places where you have a sort of a, a return to nationalism. So uh, those two movements are um, on, the, on the same time happening, so probably culture will stay maybe in a dif in different way, and maybe culture means something, but not that much when we talk about <coughs> consuming. Mm -hmm.